By the rivers of Babylon, we sat and wept. When we remembered Zion. How can we sing the songs of the Lord in a strange land? So in the late 500s, Queen Bertha, a Frankish princess from an area in France, marries an East Anglian pagan called King Ethelbert. As part of the deal for getting married, she brings with her a chaplain, a Christian chaplain, because her Christianity was important to her. She wanted to make sure that when she reached this foreign land, that there was something at least familiar. And so when she got to England, she decided to build a church, St. Martin's, a patron saint of the area where she came from in Francia. She builds a church uh, and a little chapel there on a site of what was probably a Christian martyr's memorial that had fallen into disuse from Roman times. This chapel today is the oldest English-speaking church still in continual use, almost some 1,400 years later. The thing that really touched me, or I really felt um, like this is, this is a place that started the whole Christian movement in England, if I can say that. And what really touched me was it's simple. It was a place where I could just sit and relax and, and reflect, but what did it really mean to come to a new place and to become, to be a Christian when no one else was? I haven't really worked in a secular Western context. I have been mainly in a developing world in a very different context, but in that context, I often was alone, in that the other people weren't Christians, they weren't able to respond to my, um, my need for a Christian spirituality, Christian religion. And so I think that's why, to me, I related to her having a place where she could go that she's alone, but she has somewhere to go. And I do think it can apply to people in the, a more secular world because many people will be alone in their Christianity in that they can't share it with everyone around them. And so there is, there is a loneliness and yet there's also a comfort in having a place that you can go to. When you're in a strange land, or in Babylon as you can put it, you have three options. You can engage, or you can fight it, or you can retreat. And I personally chose that I would want to engage those around me. Missions is often misconstrued to be something that must be done overseas, in another country, away from home, um, to a people that are traditional. But the word missions comes from the Latin word missio, which is about sending. And if God is the owner of missions, He is the one sending. And He sends us into our communities wherever we find ourselves. He is not sending us from one place to another place. He's always sending us into our communities. Thank you. 